from historic state houses acting as educational galleries featuring assortments of artifacts of the past that are rumored to be stalked by all manner of ghostly presence to renowned former military campuses housing a range of refurbished aircraft and countless associated restless spirits. Are you ready for our second list of picks for some of the most chillingly haunted museums in the United States? Number 5. The Old Polk County Courthouse The Old Polk County Courthouse Building, located off East Parker Street in Bartow, Florida, is a historic courthouse now hosting the Polk County History Center and Genealogical Library that, ironically, acts itself as the largest piece of the museum's collection. Historically, in 1851, Fort Blount was established near where Bartow now lies, and in 1862, one Jacob Summerlin would purchase a portion of Blount lands, of which he would donate a parcel for the construction of the future Bartow. Following the Civil War, Bartow would recover slowly. Construction of the first Polk County Courthouse would land in 1867, though this early building would later be demolished. In 1884, a new structure was erected in its stead and would also later face demolition. And in 1909, a third and final courthouse was opened on site. Today, this third and final structure houses the Polk County Historical Museum and Genealogical Library, and according to various local accounts and fables, its fair share of paranormal activity, with both staff and visitors reporting extreme cold spots across the first floor, encounters with a woman in white on the third, and disembodied screams that emanate ominously from the basement, where it said a worker was killed long ago in a boiler explosion. The most famous story surrounding this aged center of justice tells of how, in 1886, the Mann brothers were accused of killing one Marshal Silas Campbell in the street adjacent and were subsequently lynched within the courthouse, their bodies left on display for all to see. Two full-bodied entities bearing their likeness have been sighted on the second floor rotunda, at times gazing into the horizon and at others swinging from their necks. Number 4. Connecticut's Old State House Connecticut's Old State House, located off Main Street in Hartford, Connecticut, is a historic structure that boasts the title of being one of the oldest state houses in the entirety of the U.S. Historically, this state house was initially designed and constructed in 1796 under notable architect Charles Bullfinch out of Boston and would mark his first public building project. And a year later, in 1797, Hartford painter Reverend Joseph Stewart would establish established the Hartford Museum within the building's East Committee Room. Through the early 1800s, the balustrade was installed in consideration of workers or firefighters who might have to utilize the roof or surrounding structures. And in 1827, the cupola was constructed and would house a bell alongside John Stanwood's Statue of Justice. The State House would serve as a seat of government for a time until our present Capitol building was established near Bushnell Park in 1878, after which this aging structure would go on to act as City Hall until 1915, when our current municipal campus was constructed. In the present, Connecticut's old state house stands as a history museum, accommodating hundreds of thousands of local, national, and international visitors annually. Through its lengthy existence, a number of ghost stories have been associated with this prestigious expanse, with both staff and visitors telling of doors that open and close on their own, of lights that flicker inexplicably, of objects sighted moving by themselves, and of material within locked displays found completely rearranged in the morning upon opening. Also reported at the State House are the disembodied sounds of a woman singing, footsteps heard from empty spaces, and accounts of phantom knocking and of doorknobs rattling spontaneously, and a handful of museum goers have described chilling encounters with both shadowy figures and full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras. Number 3. The Museum of the Rockies the Museum of the Rockies, located off West KG Boulevard in Bozeman, Montana, is a museum renowned for its hosting of the largest collection of dinosaur fossils in the United States, which includes a piece of Tyrannosaurus rex hip bone with soft tissue actually still attached, as well as the largest Tyrannosaurus rex skull ever uncovered. 
Historically, this museum was first founded in 1957 and would receive generous funding from first pathologist in state and first successful female doctor in Butte, Carolina M. McGill. McGill would work closely with Montana State University through the museum's establishment, would even be honored as its first curator, and the site would originally take her name, opening its doors as the McGill Museum, though later, in 1965, it would incorporate as the Museum of the Rockies. In 1980, the museum's collection would acquire over 10,000 photographs and negatives that would piece together the history of Bozeman and Yellowstone from around 1905 up through the 1970s. And in 2005, the site would be welcomed as an affiliate of the Smithsonian Institution, allowing for access to more exotic collections and materials. The Museum of the Rockies remains open into the present, acting as part of the Montana Dinosaur Trail, and offers over 300,000 artifacts, spanning through more than 500 million years of history. Over time, a number of local legends detail hauntings and otherworldly activity within this aged museum, purportedly resulting from spirits tied to various displays or to biological matter tracked in, some of which is multiples of millennia old, and both staff and visitors to the property have described extreme cold spots, orbs captured in photography, inexplicable electrical malfunctions, and the constant feeling of being watched or followed. The Tinsley House, now the Living History Farm, was constructed near Willow Creek in 1889, was moved to museum grounds in 1989, and today contains an assortment of items donated by descendants of the Tinsley family themselves. Many tell the spirits of the Tinsley family remain within the old abode, and those who have entered it have told of shadowy figures sighted darting about, of disembodied voices and footsteps, and of close encounters with full-bodied apparitions in old-fashioned clothing. Number 2. The Castle Air Museum the Castle Air Museum, located off Santa Fe Drive, adjacent to the Castle Airport in Atwater, California, is a 25-acre military aviation museum that's widely recognized as one of the largest aerospace museums displaying vintage aircraft in the western United States. Historically, the Castle Air Museum would open its doors on June 20th of 1921 as a branch of the U.S. Air Force Museum system and with only 12 total aircraft. However, when the Castle Air Force Base ceased operations in 1995 and was subsequently transformed into the Castle Airport, the museum would resume operations under private management. In 2008, the museum would earn its 50th display aircraft milestone after welcoming a Douglas A-4L Skyhawk. In October of 2013, the site would receive a VC-9C that had previously held the honor of acting as Air Force One and Air Force Two, and in 2021, the establishment would acquire five aircraft from the Naval Air Museum Barbers Point following its closure two years prior. The Castle Air Museum remains open into the present, offering over 60 restored aircraft, ranging from World War II to the Korean War to the Cold War and even into more modern designs, alongside artifacts, photographs, various types of engines, and more. Local tale tells the whole of the museum site is haunted by various spirits tied to the many pieces in its collection, and over the years, both staff and visitors have reported objects sighted moving on their own, inexplicable power outages, disembodied voices and footsteps, and encounters with ominous shadowy figures. While several informal investigations have yielded high EMF levels, extreme temperature fluctuations, and spontaneous battery failure in equipment that's both well-maintained and fully charged. One of the many planes on display, the Raisin Hell, is a Boeing B-29 Super Fortress, just like the Enola Gray and Boxcar, which transported and dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This aircraft is rumored to be haunted by a ghost named Arthur, and those who have neared or entered it have told of landing lights coming on randomly, of hatches snapping closed suddenly and dangerously close to fingers, of strange knocking sounds, of the locked propellers spinning, and of instances in which the co-pilot's window opens on its own. Number 1. The Gilcrease Museum 
the Gilcrease Museum, located off North Gilcrease Museum Road in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a 460-acre museum space recognized for its holding of one of the most extensive and extravagant collections of Native American and Western artifacts not just in the state, not just in the country, but in the world. Historically, at the turn of the 20th century, one Thomas Gilcrease would be allotted 160 acres of land for his relationship with the Muscogee or Creek Nation, and this land would be transformed into Oklahoma's first major oil fields. In 1912, Thomas would purchase his first oil painting, which some claim awakened the art collector within. In 1922, he would found the Gilcrease Oil Company, greatly expanding his holdings, and through the 19 1920s and 30s, he would travel extensively while visiting a slew of museums and galleries along the way. From 1939 and onward, Gilcrease would begin acquiring art on a much larger scale, and by 1943, he would open the very first Gilcrease Museum from within his oil company's headquarters. In 1949, Thomas's company and growing collection would be moved to his Tulsa estate, where he would open his art up for viewing. In 1955, he would deed his entire amassment to the city, and upon his passing in 1962, he would bequeath the museum and all of its pieces. More recently, in 2008, the University of Tulsa, in partnership with the city, would assume management of the site, which remains open into the present, housing around 10,000 pieces of art alongside the Gilcrease Gardens, while hosting numerous annual events. Quite classically, the Gilcrease Museum is rumored to be haunted by spirits tied to its various pieces of art, as well as by the spirit of Thomas Gilcrease, whose soul is said to have been so attached to his collection that it may have just remained behind, and across the property, both staff and visitors have reported objects sighted moving on their own, accounts of personal effects going missing and turning up later in strange places, and the unshakable feelings of being watched, followed, or even of being touched by a presence unseen. Several full-bodied apparitions in traditional native attire have been spied wandering about, looking lost and slightly confused, and informal investigations have yielded extreme temperature fluctuations, electronic malfunctions, and instances of doors slamming on their own. Also reported across museum grounds are a range of disembodied voices and whispers, including the phantom sounds of a woman heard singing, always from somewhere just out of sight, and the commotion of what sounds like two men arguing, and handfuls of spectral children have been spied darting about after clothes, when all should be locked for the night. Lastly, an entity bearing a likeness to Thomas himself has been spied wandering about, seemingly keeping an eye over the place, and usually bears a look of contentment, some say, over the immaculate preservation of his life's work. Taking its fascinating history into account, and coupling it with a formidable range of ghost stories and urban legends, we felt there really was no more perfect choice than the Gilcrease Museum for this list's most haunted museum in the U.S. Thanks for joining us for our second list of some of the most chillingly haunted museums in the U.S. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on, throw us a like, and share us with anyone you feel deserves a good scare. We'll catch you next time.